Welcome everyone, we're Bedonia team. And these are, our ID numbers from 437 to 442. Today, we will speak about Geth Chromatography. Before entering into any details we have to know first what is gas chromatography, so we will discuss, the general principle, the importance of GC, component of gas chromatography, finally, the advantages, and the disadvantages of gas chromatography. Chromatography, is a technique used to separate and identify the components of a mixture, how it works, it works by allowing the molecules present in the mixture to distribute themselves between a stationary and a mobile phase. Let's see this figure above. Here, the wall of capillary column, flow of helium, molecules moving slowly because more abundant in the stationary phase. And these molecules moves rapidly because more abundant in the mobile phase. So molecules that spend most of their time in mobile phase are carried along faster. These are common types of chromatography, TLC, LC, HPLC, and GC gas chromatography. What is the importance of GC? It is good for volatile samples, 0.1 to 1 microliter of liquid and 1 to 10 mLs vapor. Also it can detect less than 1 ppm with certain detectors. It is easily automated for injection and data analysis. Let's see the components of gas chromatography. Gas carrier, pressure control, column, injection, detector, and data system. Here list of advantages of GC. High sensitivity, high resolution power, good accuracy and precision, separate samples with less quantity, and it is very quickly. On the other hand here are the disadvantages. It is only for volatile samples, and the sample must be thermally stable. Thank you. Keep watching. To perform gas chromatography, often called GC, we use a gas chromatograph. A gas chromatograph is an instrument with a long column filled with small particles coated with a very thin layer of an adsorbent. This layer is the stationary phase of the column. Helium runs through the column and is the mobile phase. A sample injected into the gas chromatograph is instantly vaporized in a heated injection chamber so that the components are in the gas phase and then it flows through the column. The helium is the carrier for your sample. This technique allows us to separate volatile organic compounds based on their physical properties and determine relative amounts of product yields. Coupled with a computer library, GC can also be used to identify organic compounds. To run a GC, you first need to prepare the sample for injection. Using a small syringe, collect between 1 and 5 microliters of the sample in the syringe, followed by 3 to 4 microliters of air. Be sure that your sample is free of drying agent to avoid clogging the syringe. Once the sample is loaded into the syringe, insert the needle into the GC injection port. You will feel resistance as you insert the syringe. Continue to insert the needle through this resistant material called the septum until the glass is flush with the injection port. Be careful not to bend the syringe. You can now inject your sample into the gas chromatograph. When you inject your sample, make sure to promptly plunge the syringe without bending it. It is necessary to ensure that the entirety of the sample is injected at one time. At the same time you inject the sample, turn on the chart recorder. Make sure it is recording by checking the chart paper feed. If there is no paper or the paper jams, contact the TA for assistance. Wait until the entire sample has run through the column. While the sample runs through the column, clean the syringe that you used to inject your sample. 
Pull a solvent such as methanol into the syringe. Then empty it into a waste container to clean it of any remaining sand. You can check out the GC column by opening the door to the oven. The latch for the door is in the lower right hand side of the oven. The column is supported on a wire frame. It is connected by means of special fittings to the injection port at the top of the oven. Samples injected here quickly vaporize and are pushed onto the GC column using helium carrier gas. The other end of the column exits through the oven wall to the left and goes on to the mass spectrometer. Let's take a closer look at the injector. It can be heated separately from the oven to a high temperature that ensures that samples vaporize quickly upon injection. Sample is introduced from the top through a rubber septum. Helium comes in from the right, pushing the sample toward the capillary at the bottom. If we let the sample gas fill the entire injector, it will take a long time and a large volume of helium to push it all onto the column. Furthermore, even microliter amounts of sample will overload the stationary phase on the capillary. The most common remedy is known as a split injection. We introduce another opening at the bottom to allow gas to escape. This is known as the split vent. We also confine the sample to a smaller volume by inserting a glass liner. Often the liner contains a small bed of silica particles coated with stationary phase at the bottom. The particles enhance the vaporization and help focus the gases. As sample vaporizes inside the glass liner, it has two ways to escape. A very small portion goes down the capillary, while a much larger portion goes out the vent. The oven temperature can be set manually from the controls on the front of the panel. Type in the new value and press the Enter key. You can also set the temperature of the injection port, which is in position B on this instrument. The upper limit is 280 degrees centigrade on this instrument. The separation column passes through a short transfer line between the oven and the mass spectrometer. This zone should also be heated to 280 degrees. Yeah.
is a partial table of the numerous capillary column stationary phases and their associated applications. Notice that like dissolves like. Polar wax type columns are used to separate polar samples, like alcohol and nonpolar columns are used for hydrocarbon analysis. The GC column is where sample separation takes place in the stationary phase. The stationary phase is usually a very high molecular weight liquid. It is very viscous, almost a solid at room temperature. The sample is injected into the GC injection port and vaporized at a high temperature. It is then carried through the column by the carrier gas, which is also called the mobile phase. The flow rate of the carrier gas is very accurately controlled by the pressure in the injection port. While the sample is swept through the column, it goes through a series of interactions where it is absorbed into the stationary phase and then desorbed back into the carrier stream. Each of these interactions is called a theoretical plate. Each sample component is retained based on its solubility in the stationary phase and the boiling point of the sample component. To maximize sample separation and minimize analysis time, the GC oven is usually programmed from a low to high temperature after the sample is injected.